Operational monitoring is most useful at identifying sporadic changes that have to be rectified as soon as possible. It can also identify design failures, that is, failures that will require systems to be redesigned or modified. The main objective of operational monitoring is to optimise the productivity of the PV facility. The most important operational monitoring device will be the meter because it's the last device in the system. It's the device that monitors all the energy that's being produced and injected into the grid. If the objective of operational monitoring and control systems is to inject the maximum amount of energy possible into the grid, the PV facility will deliver maximum performance. Different references are needed from different devices if we're to judge whether a facility is producing as much energy as it might. The most common references are radiation and temperature, but other references could include your own practical experience or the performance of other PV facilities in the same area. The meter may be the most important monitoring device, but it provides no information on the performance of the plant, only the amount of energy being produced. The inverter is a broader source of information. It can provide warnings and messages that confirm the state of different devices in the solar facility. The inverter is almost also extremely important because an inverter malfunction can stop a plant completely. Operational monitoring systems enable the detection of incidents in real time. They can be important in predicting the cause of a problem and what will be necessary for its rapid resolution. Here, Monitoring the inverter's performance is extremely important. Systems need to be in place to alert those who will be responsible for getting the PV facility back to full production. Alarms such as sirens or automated text messaging are important. Local staff can never be fully replaced by software or remote control and it's essential that spare parts and equipment are available at the PV facility to resolve incidents as quickly as possible. The cost of purchasing and storing spare inverters should be taken into account when looking at the costs and benefits of installing fewer larger inverters or more smaller and therefore cheaper inverters. This slide is an example monitoring system at the Val de Caramos PV facility in the south of Madrid. Green or yellow squares indicate the different meters in the solar plant. Yellow meters indicate that production is at least 5% lower than the product productivity measured by green meters. An average production meeting, me, reading across all measures is used as an indicator of what individual panels should be producing. A yellow meter is usually an indicator that the sun tracker for that meter needs recalibration or repair. The slide is actually a view of the control panel for the monitoring system. The system is monitored remotely and in some cases the sun tracker can be altered remotely based on the data uploaded to the internet from the site. This customised Windows-based software can also trigger notifications of incidents or alerts where appropriate. The main reason to install remote control systems is to meet legal requirements and also possibly to reduce costs. Remote controls means you do not always have to visit a malfunctioning part to repair it. Repairing the malfunction faster means that the plant returns to full production faster, generating greater revenue. Remote control can also reduce the need for personnel, again saving money. The main devices that can be controlled remotely are the inverter, the sun trackers and the electrical protections. Other elements that can be controlled remotely include the monitoring system and the security system. The meters can never be controlled remotely. In a PV facility, the main elements requiring maintenance are the inverters, sun trackers and panels. It's important to differentiate between two types of maintenance, corrective tasks that are undertaken only when an incident occurs and preventive tasks that are undertaken periodically to prevent possible incidents. 
Lessons can be learned from the corrective maintenance that's required, resulting in the addition of new tasks to the preventive maintenance schedules. In an inverter, failures can be classified according to their seriousness or according to their origin. If seriousness is used as the classification, there are two types of failure that can be distinguished, warnings and alarms. Well, we only have to consider the alarms. It's important that they are minimised because an unanswered alarm could result in a complete stop of the plant. Warnings are not as important. In fact, virtually at all times, the inverter will be sending out warnings related to the different parameters of the solar plant. The inverter is a source of data about its own performance, but also about the performance of the solar plant. This is very important to system monitoring because it provides data on developments on the DC side. It's a source of data on energy production by the different strings of panels, as well as data from the AC side on what is occurring between the inverter and the grid. The most common incidents in inverter are isolation failures between the solar panels and the inverter. Low DC voltage is another issue. Problems with the maximum power point tracking system can be either an external failure where the configuration of the panels produces a deviation from the maximum power point tracking or an internal failure because of some problem with the inter inverter software. This is the gravest kind of failure that can be found in an inverter because it's really important to get the maximum energy from the solar plant by optimizing the performance of the maximum power point tracking system. A frequency out of range alarm is another important consideration. This is an external failure that occurs between the inverter and the grid. The most common failure in sun tracking systems is an orientation or positional failing usually because the sun tracker is not synchronised with the position of the sun. It's important to have a system that checks that synchronisation periodically. To have that position modification system remotely controlled eases this task considerably. High winds are a threat to a sun tracker system. Wind speeds need to be measured so that the system can be protected and the remote control should be able to place the panels at a safe orientation while the winds blow and then reorient these panels when the so uh, towards the sun when it's safe to do so once more. Other issues to be detected include over voltage. While a limited movement sensor enables the sun tracker to overpass positions where sunlight will not fall.